Martin, how good are Rangers? The cynics would say they're maybe just the best of a fairly mediocre bunch in Scotland at the moment. Is there anything in that? Well, obviously, I think um, the most important thing for Rangers and Graham soon is is um, um, prove themselves in the European arena, which they haven't really done yet. But it looks to me as if they're going to win the championship this year, so they're going to have another bash at the European Cup next year. And I'm quite sure they're well equipped to go far in that. Maybe just need another extra special player in the middle of the park. You know, maybe a young Graham Souness, for instance, just to make them that a little bit special. But they could go a long way in the smashing side. Trevor Stephen is a high-quality player, but he's tended to flip in and out of things. He hasn't really dominated games over a long period, has really. he? No, I think the Rangers midfield, um, you know, they've lost players, there's been players, it's never really been settled for any length of time, you know. Over the last two or three years, I mean, they lost Graham Souness as a player, they've lost Ray Wilkins, the Durant injury, Ferguson's been in and out, and then um, Trevor Stevens had to flip from position to position, and uh, he settled down, and I think um, everybody's pretty happy with the way he's playing at the moment. McCoyston Johnson had a great spell earlier in the season, that was really the spell that has won Rangers the title, if indeed they're to go on and do so, but they've they gone through a dodgy spell of late. Uh, do you see them back on form? They obviously both scored last week. Well, on the evidence of last week's performance against Celtic, certainly, I think it's difficult for strikers to maintain um, a, a high level of consistency right throughout the season. I think there's always going to be at some stage in the season when they have little um, bare patches, don't knock in the goals. But as I say, last Saturday they were very, very impressive against um, Celtic. And they're the type of players, if you give them the good service, you get good, your midfield dominates, get the ball to Walters, get it to Johnson, get it to McCoy's, they'll do you a lot of damage. All sounds really simple, doesn't it? Yeah. If, if you're interested to know how the FA Cup finals are going in England, I can tell you that one match kicked off at 12 noon, and in that one, Crystal Palace beat Liverpool 4-3. Yes, that's true. And the other one kicks off at 3 o'clock. That's Manchester United against Oldham. And if we have time before the end of the programme, we'll squeeze in a few details about that. The man plotting the downfall of Rangers here this afternoon is the Aberdeen manager, Alex Smith. I spoke to him a short time ago down in the Petondry boot room. How disappointed is he at Aberdeen's slim hopes of the title depend on Rangers blowing it? Obviously, uh, I would want to be closer to, to Rangers. Uh, last weekend, uh, I felt we had the, our best opportunity to get close to them. We had an opportunity ourselves to win at Dundee, and we didn't take that opportunity. We, we played well enough without winning the game. And Rangers had an excellent result on Sunday, uh, which makes life a bit more difficult for us. Uh, although I'm not prepared at this stage to say that everything's finished. If we win today, then uh, we can get things closer again, and uh, it's going to be interesting the last couple of games after that. Aberdeen are much admired as a, as a side who play good football. On the negative side, do you think Aberdeen lack a mean streak? Uh, maybe a killer touch which has lost you vital points during the season? Oh, that would be easy for me to say that and use that as a, a reason for our indifferent results. I think more that it was more to do with what happened to us in and around Boxing Day in the end of December when we lost six players within a uh, short space of time. And when you lose uh, that kind of quality, uh, despite the fact that you may have a strong squad, there's always something gives and you, let, you then start getting slightly inconsistent results. And when that was happening to us, Rangers were winning the games uh, and uh, there was a gap created. But uh, at that stage, I wouldn't have said that we needed, uh, we were without a mean streak then because we had won the Skull Cup and we were doing well and we were at the top of the league. Uh, it may, we, we need a particular type of player maybe to complement the type of players we have. Obviously, today's game is important in terms of league points. It's also important in terms of keeping the form going for the Cup semi-final against Dundee United. Yes, it's very important for a lot of reasons, Robbie. We have uh, players here trying to play themselves in the international squads, for instance. Uh, it's very important for them. The game's been watched by millions of people on television. Uh, it's very important from a prestige point of view. The fact that Rangers and Aberdeen have played each other four times so far this season and both clubs have won twice uh, makes it very interesting from that point of view as well and uh, it's very prestigious so uh, we would like to win, win the game and uh, also from the point of view that we play in the Scottish Cup next week against Dundee United it would be a nice confidence booster. We had hoped to speak to Rangers about this afternoon's match, obviously, but uh, Rangers are still enforcing a policy of non-cooperation towards Scottish television. Gordon McQueen's always good for a bit of cooperation, we hope. Prediction this afternoon. 
Well, I don't think I'd like to make a living predicting um, Aberdeen Rangers games. Um, and the way up to Aberdeen today, uh, I thought, well, you might be looking at a score draw here today. But I detect a little bit of pessimism with Aberdeen supporters, maybe one or two of the players, Jim Beck, talking before the game. And I'm going to go for a Rangers win today. OK, we might hold that against you later <laughs> on. Let's cross to the commentary box now. You will hear from me in St John. You'll hear now from Jock Brand. Thank you, Rob. Yes, you come over just as the teams are expected to take the field. And Petardry looking an absolute picture for this afternoon's match. And there is the Aberdeen lineup confirmed. And you'll see the principal change from the expected lineup is Willem van der Ark is out. And the replacement is Neil Simpson. Bobby Mims continues in goal with Theo Snelders not deemed fit enough yet to play. And Willie Miller was not considered either because of his injury problems. So a very interesting change that by Aberdeen, which we'll analyse a little more later on. And the Rangers side has turned out to be exactly as expected that appears to be their recognized top 11 now they have on the bench David Dodds formerly with Aberdeen and John Brown so a little bit of power on the bench also for Rangers should that be required so there's the news from the two camps as far as teams concerned uh, Ian and the significant change for Aberdeen Neil Simpson coming in that appears to mean a midfield player for a striker with Villa Under Art out what do you make of that well, uh, sometimes, you know, you look at a football team and think, we've brought a midfield player in, that means we're going to play defensive football. It's not always the case. I mean, Neil Simpson, he hasn't played much football this year at all. Uh, so it's a case of, will he, be, will he be fit enough to go the 90 minutes? Because this is going to be a hectic game. And I think uh, that's one factor we have to look at as a, as a game unfolds. But he's a very good player, although there's no love loss between him and the Rangers fans. Uh, but I'm sure he's got over that little problem. But uh, looking at the teams... You know, you, you see Rangers have got their two strikers, Johnson and McCoy. I've scored the bulk of their goals along with Mark Walters, where in the Aberdeen lineup, it's more spread out. You know, Hill House has got 10, Paul Mason 15, Charlie's got 12, Betts got six, you know, Grant's got seven. So, I mean, they've spread their goals around the team, whereas the Rangers have gone for the two biggies up the front and grabbing all the goals for them. Just talking about that fitness point, you know, that does seem to be significant. Neil Simpson hasn't played in the first team for 10 weeks. Now, how difficult is it, you've been in this position, how difficult is it to come back after such a layoff and come into a match at this level? Well, it's going to be difficult for him. I mean, all depends, you know, the type of training he's been doing, if he's been getting some matches with the, the reserve team. But it will be difficult because you come into this type of football, the pace of the game, the atmosphere itself drains you and nervous tension and uh, it will affect him and we might look at that later in the game and say well there you are, Simpson's uh, dragging a bit here, he might have to get the hook and be taken off. Interesting too in the Rangers setup with their midfield with Trevor Stephen, Ian Ferguson and Nigel Spackman there with Mark Walters could there be some significance in the positioning of Stephen and Ferguson? Well, yes, I mean, I, I think uh, Trevor Stephen can play two positions. He can play wide on the right, and he's very good at that, or at least he certainly was down in England. And he always can, he can play inside, tucked in, in that inside position in midfield. And he can use that as well because he, he can pass the ball. He's, he's a good, uh, good player. So it'll be interesting to see today how the Rangers uh, line up with Trevor Stephen. So there, the Aberdeen team taking the field. It's very unusual to find any team getting a warmer welcome than Rangers in such a match in Scotland, but with the beach end only populated by Rangers supporters, comprising about 5,000 in all. The rest of the crowd, that means 17,500 all here backing the home side, Aberdeen. So there's Charlie Nicholas, who scored, as Ian St. John said, 12 goals this season, but he scored none in his opening 19 matches, and he scored 12 in the last 20, so he really is in good scoring form now. And while he's a big threat, perhaps the major current threat is the Dutchman, Hans Hillhaus, who's come into Scottish football with a bang. He had a little bit of injury problem, which slowed him down somewhat. He scored ten times since that fabulous debut he made against Dunfermline back in November. And Ali McCoy came back to scoring form last week against Celtic with that penalty kick, and he really needed that goal quite badly. He hadn't scored for some time before that. And he's also anxious, of course, about his Scotland international place. And Morris Johnston, too, has continually knocked in goals. He's scored nothing but singles in his Rangers career. He's never scored more than one goal in a match for Rangers, but he scored 16 in all. 
And the referee this afternoon is Mr. David Sign from Rutherglen, who replaces the original selection, George Smith, a World Cup referee who's still suffering from that Achilles injury. And David Sign has had a busy weekend because yesterday he was at Ockelview refereeing Stennis Muir against Dumbarton. So glorious conditions for the start of the match. The pitch heavily watered this morning, so it won't be fiery or dusty as Rangers get the match underway. And the crowd settles down to what could well be a showpiece for Scottish football. So Brian Irvin with a pass back, giving his goalkeeper, Bobby Mims, an early touch. Mims playing his last match for Aberdeen before returning to Tottenham Hotspur tomorrow. His loan period expired. An early touch for the Rangers' back four players, Gary Stevens and Richard Goff. And for the keeper, Chris Woods. Chris Woods has the backing of the Rangers fans behind him at that beach end. Irvin going up with Johnston. Connors clearance. Golf coming in behind Hillhouse. Hillhouse wins it. There's Stuart Monroe. McCoy is trying to screen the ball from Irvin. Here's Walters. Kimmy trying to block any cross. Well, the stumble there from Walters. Here's Spackman. Driving towards the byline. And it's Irvin who's forced to concede the first corner kick of the match. Well, and of course, they start there from Mark Walters, although Rangers still kept the pressure on with Nigel Spackman, the supporting player. So Terry Butcher goes to the near post. Richard Goff is at the far corner of the box. Trevor Stephen once again with the corner kick. All the noise you hear coming from Rangers fans at the moment. Trevor Stephen trying to place the ball within the D there for the corner kick. That's the result to some rugby player tactics there to create a spot for the ball taken away there by Brian Grant well, Stuart Monroe will take this throw for Rangers checking with the referee the correct place for the throw Johnston robbed by McKimmy there's Spackman Ball breaking back to give Rangers another throw. So Aberdeen finding it difficult to get quality possession at this stage of the match. The referee we're looking towards the line to let play continue. Here's McCoy, and now Walters. And Trevor Stephen was in, she's away. A chance there as the ball was deflected towards Stephen. And the referee is given a goal kick, but good work here by Morris Johnston. Then by McCoy, setting this up for Mark Walters. Driving the ball across, it appeared to take a deflection. Stephen couldn't get a touch, and it's surprising that that was given as a goal kick. Well, as you see, that uh, Stevens is prepared to get himself forward and get in that box. It was very important, you know, that uh, if somebody's going to knock the ball across, the midfield players have got to be up there in support. And while we thought that the introduction of Neil Simpson might push Aberdeen into a 4-4-2, the early stages indicate that Paul Mason is going to play right up front with Nicholas and Hillhouse, retaining that 4-3-3 shape. And Trevor Stephen playing wide for Rangers, as we, we thought, Jock. Here's Connor. Getting some help from his skipper, Alec McLeish. Goff winning it well from Hillhouse. Hillhouse backing into Goff. The referee allows play to continue with Rangers in possession despite the howls of the Rangers fans for a free kick. The free kick has now been given for the tackle by Alec McLeish on Morris Johnston. So Rangers still going forward. It's been a convincing start from Rangers. Stephen to Spackman. Now Walters. Cover provided there by Simpson. Stephen brought down by Hillhouse. The referee's given the free kick. Well, Hans Hillhouse known more for his goal scoring and creative talents than for that kind of tackle. 
Well taken by Mims. Very commanding figure in the Aberdeen goal. Playing his eighth match. He's just been on the losing side once. Oh, an unorthodox kick out. Resulting in the ball being returned there for a free kick given for some elbow work inside the box. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Little, little Mo was getting just too close to him there. And the, the referee decided, you know, he wasn't fringing. You know, the cushioned layoff there by Hillhouse for Bet. Well challenged by Stephen. That's too far ahead of McCoist. Please stick on on Aberdeen, so adept at playing football from defence. Connor couldn't get there in time. That's a throw to Rangers. Well, Rangers will be content, I think, with this opening five-minute spell. They've buried down very convincingly in. Yes, yeah, started off in a very positive manner, and as we thought, because, I mean, there's no point in coming to it again, such as this, with so much at stake, and sitting back and expecting the, to win the match. They've got to have a go. So this time the throw goes to Aberdeen, and Jim Bett will take it. Simpson offering himself shot. Nicholas and Hill is doing some cross running up on the left flank. Turned away by Butcher. Very diligent marking by the Rangers defence. Irvin showing himself inside, tackled instantly by Spackman. This is Bet. And a shimmy to make space for himself. McKimmy calls for the ball on the far side. Leaping very early for that ball, but Stuart Monroe was well in control of things at the back for Rangers. Judged by both McCoyst and Connor. Little push there by McCoyst, and the referee is given the free kick. So a capacity crowd here at Petaudry, 22 and a half thousand in this superb all-seater stadium. In summery conditions, it is very pleasant indeed overhead. Little breeze which Aberdeen are playing into at the moment. Goff going for the ball, Nicholas didn't know. Richard Goff is dearly upset by that decision, and referee Syme giving the free kick against Rangers, although in fairness, Goff seemed to be the player trying to play the ball, whereas Nicholas was not making any real attempt to jump. I would agree with that, Jock. I think you're, you're right in that one, and uh, I'm always surprised when referees do that. You know, the defender goes for the ball, the forward bends his back, and the, the, the foul's against the defender. A chance now for Aberdeen to get forward. Brian Irvin and Alec McLeish are in the box. One by Butcher. Here's Simpson. Grant plays it wide. An awkward one for Jim Bett. That was almost an excellent pass. Bett hugging the left side of the Aberdeen midfield at this stage. This Hill House back towards Grant. It's a second chance from Walters. Here's Nicholas away from Goff. Sidestepping Butcher, but Spackman was there with a the challenge. And down goes Butcher. Free kick to Rangers. Charlie Nicholas inquiringly looking towards the referee, wondering why he didn't get a free kick. Spinning off the head of McLeish, that was Connor. Butcher hooks it clear. McKimmy caught there by Walters. And Will keeps it in. Here's Brian Grant, the early pass trying to pick up Charlie Nicholas ahead. Nicholas, who always wants the ball played to feet. A little bit unhappy about the lack of accuracy in that pass. Irvin's header, Grant chesting it down to McKimmy. 
certainly can be taking some good nature rubbing here at Aberdeen about his failure to score for the club for so long and then pop up with that great goal for Scotland against Argentina. So free kick to Rangers. Will be taken by Richard Goff. Well, white fetlocks today, Richard. <laughs> I don't know, is that strapping he's got on there for his ankles? Certainly just appears to be. So fancy socks. Goff playing a long free kick. There was Terry Butcher. And an offside flag up against Morris Johnston. Yes, Richard Goff was one of the Rangers players particularly pleased to find that the pitch had been watered. You feel that, that reflects his little bit of anxiety about the hard grounds at this time of the year. So that may be the reason for that uh, substantial ankle strapping. Mason's header, there's Hillhouse and Nicholas looking for Bet on the left. Retaining possession well away from Gary Stevens, who took a knock in that challenge with Bet. Back now with Nicholas taking on Steven. From Charlie Nicholas, the ball just shaving the ball in the end. Look at the way he takes this. He's thinking only of one thing now: getting a shot on target, taking on Trevor Stephen, and then the outside of the right boot, floating that just over the bar. It was a little toe poke at the end of it, but lovely skill with Charlie. Saw the lovely dummy come inside, and then just had a little toe poke off his forward foot, just a shade over the bar. But lovely skill. So Charlie Nicholas looking in the mood. There will be a hold up before Chris Woods can take this goal kick because Gary Stevens is getting some treatment. Remember, he was injured making that tackle on Jim Bett just a moment ago. Gary Stevens, one of the other presents in the Rangers lineup, was Stuart Monroe and Wallace Johnston, and a very resilient character. Phil Borsma administers the treatment. Certainly nothing sinister in the challenge. It was Stevens trying to play the ball and Bet spinning it. He looks to be in substantial trouble. Yeah, it doesn't look good for Rangers because uh, normally when you go up the first time, if you've had a knock and the, the trainer's been on, you get up. It's a case of, you know, OK, I'm fine, and you go on with the game. But to sit back down again is obviously in some pain. And indeed, Rangers are calling John Brown from a warm-up position behind Chris Wood's goal, round to the dugout. It looks as though there may be an enforced change required by Rangers very early in the match well let's have a look and see how this happened there was bet there was a challenge made by Gary Stevens appeared to go over on his ankle in fact after making the challenge very simply done he just went over on his ankle you're right enough Joe so Rangers continue for the moment with 10 men to establish for sure whether or not Stevens may be fit to resume but John Brown has been called there to the track there's Graham Sinners with Walter Smith there in the stand of course Here's Morris Johnston. Well tackled by Mason. He tackles back very well indeed. The Aberdeen number nine. That's good play by Spikeman and by McCoist. Stephen coming from the wide right position. Dropped back to replace Gary Stevens for the moment. And McKimmy showing his confidence in Bobby Mims and in his own heading ability. Butcher's header, there's Walters. Brought down there by Irvin. And we're doing well to keep that in play. An offside flag up, but it was against Hans Hillhouse in the middle of the field, I think. Perhaps also Paul Mason on the flank. Hillhouse, though, I think, is the player that judged offside. Back from Grant. Irvin playing it forward. So Aberdeen finding it difficult to get the ball through their midfield with Grant on the right, Simpson in the middle, Bet on the left. The front three Mason, Nicholas, and Hillhouse. And here comes John Brown. 
This is his taking. Gary Stevens will not be able to return, so John Brown comes on to replace him. Now, this will involve some reorganisation, I think, of the Rangers back four. And I wonder if Richard Goff may be going to right back, or is it Stuart Munro? Stuart Munro it is, who's gone across to right back with John Brown slotting in at left back. Timmy gets it back. Coming to go into that heavy challenge on Spikeman. There's Butcher. Levin coming across. Connor. To Bet. This is Connor. Fearless ball inside, which McCoy was able to block but not control. Bonafish takes it back from Mims. Willow's getting up well, but the head of Richard Goff won the day. Monroe's first involvement as an emergency right back. And there's Bet. Oh, Mason. Will Simpson, who gave his better run. And Walters did well coming back to intercept that pass. Aimed for McKimmy. And it's McKimmy who's been flagged offside, but the referee hasn't spotted that. And with Rangers in possession, the flag has gone down. Here's Johnston. Connor wins it back. Mason's header. Here's Bet. Stepping away from Stephen. Going warm round of applause from the Aberdeen fans. Well, under pressure there from Ferguson. They've been trying the long ball this time. Looking for Mason in the middle. Header on. There's Monroe going in on Hillhouse. Well, I can't recall Stuart Monroe playing it right back at any, any other time in his career. And that certainly was a very good challenge in his new role on Hillhouse. Connor. Looking for Hillhouse. The marker again is Monroe. Simpson takes over. There's Grant. Letting the ball run. He caught Walters, the free kick to Rangers, the Aberdeen fans are not at all pleased about that, they think that Walters made a great deal of this, Grant allowed that ball to run across him, then had to go in and appeared to make contact all right with the Rangers number 11. So Butcher will take this free kick. Goff has gone forward. That's aim for Johnston. It struck the hand of Connor. Well, no question about that. That struck Robert Connor's hand, and referee Syme turns away. He's not interested at all, and clearly he's convinced that that was unintentional. Well, undoubtedly a controversial moment. But Rangers trying to get the ball out of midfield. It's picked up though by Nicholas. Here's Hillhouse. Challenged fiercely there by. Stuart Munro and Ian Ferguson is caught there by Hillhouse with a free kick to Rangers and Hans Hillhouse will be spoken to by referee David Syme and that's the reason for it that late tackle and the referee allowing attention there for Ferguson well, Ian Ferguson the second Rangers player to be in the wars after Gary Stevens had to be replaced early on by John Brown now some anxiety about Ian Ferguson what a controversial moment there as that ball appeared to strike the hand of Connor. Well, I thought the same as you when you said you felt it was uh, accidental. There you are. I'm sure that Robert Connor didn't know where the ball was. It came over his head. His right arm was out there for balance as he jumped and it hit his hand. I mean, there's no way that he would intentionally hand the ball and inside the penalty area when, you know. So, really and truly, it was, uh, it was an accident. And the Rangers players, quite rightly, of course, looking for a penalty kick. Quite clearly on the replay, Robert Connor appeared to be an innocent party. The referee Sime certainly was extremely well positioned, he was very close to the play. Clearly saw what happened, but made an instant judgment that it was an accident. So there's the spray on the right knee of Ian Ferguson. I don't think Hillhouse could complain about getting booked in that incident there, because uh, that was a, a rather late rash tackle. There's Andy Roxburgh there, who I came up in the, the flight with today from Manchester. 
And the Roxborough with Craig Alex Smith right behind the Scotland pair, looking very pensive. And Ferguson limps back into the action. A very tough character, although he has had his problems with illness and injury this season. Richard Goss free kick. Spikeman heading it on, there's Irvin. Headed away by Connor. Phil House down towards Bet. Simpson offers support inside. Hustled there by Trevor Stephen. Here's Irvin. He was bumped there on the way past by Mark Walters, so a free kick to Aberdeen. The referee clearly is determined to keep a very firm grip on things. A little bit of an exchange there between Johnston and Simpson, and suddenly things are becoming just a little bit tense. It's all getting a little bit scrappy down there, but they're having a laugh now, and uh, maybe sort now. out. But it looks as if Ferguson having to go off as well. Well, very serious indeed for Rangers. So early in the match, Ian Ferguson, who's had a most unfortunate season, started with that virus, then injury. And now he's been replaced by the former Aberdeen player, Davy Dodds. And I reckon that will be a direct replacement. Dodds, I think, will go straight into that midfield role beside Nigel Spackman. Vacated by Ferguson. The police for the free kick. Irwin beaten by Witcher. Spackman's attempt at the pass back had to be sent wide of the target and it has given Aberdeen the corner kick. Well, Spikeman caught here eventually facing his own goal and he wanted to play this back to Chris Woods but then saw that Charlie Nicholas was in the way and played it for the corner. Two skippers, McLeish and Butcher together. There's Evan and Woods just got a touch turning it off the head of Brian Irvin. Another corner kick to Aberdeen. This was very close indeed. Woods at full strength just got the slightest touch here and Irvin couldn't make contact. Got in by Paul Mason. A bit of pushing in the six-yard box by Brian Irvin, picked up by referee Sign. The free kick to Rangers. Now referee Sign is a very experienced official. 18 seasons on the grade one list, so he's calling upon all his experience for this afternoon's match, which is undoubtedly full of tension. Walters did well despite that stumble. Brown looking for Johnston, the covering player is McLeish. Clearance goes straight to Walters. There's McKimmy, and a free kick has been given. Well, the referee certainly incurring the wrath of the Aberdeen fans. I'm not certain what that was for. I think Paul Mason was adjusted the culprit. A bit of pushing, perhaps. Rangers have the free kick, which John Brown will take. Once the referee has ensured that Paul Mason goes back 10 yards. Towards David Odds. Simpson with Johnston. Cleared there by Grant. Down goes Beckman, and the culprit was Charlie Nicholas. It's a free kick again to Rangers. And there was Nicholas, he arrived late. A little striker's challenge that, mistimed. The referee content to give the free kick and acknowledge that that was a bad piece of timing by Nicholas rather than any malice. There's Butcher. McLeish mistimed that, marking Goff. There's Bet. Cool defensive play by Bet. Simpson back to McLeish. Turned away by Irvin. And Simpson tripped there by David Dodds. Well, I must say, John, I've seen more fouls in 25 minutes in this match than you see and 90 minutes in other games, I mean, it's, it's very petty at times, isn't it? You know, players are just coming in late, tripping people, pushing, shoving. 
and it's all a bit scrappy. It's nice to see when Jim Begg gets the ball, at least, you know, there's a bit of football getting played. Yeah, that's disappointing action so far, midway through the first half. An offside decision against Charlie Nicholas. Well, we've had some outstanding play only in glimpses. One from Charlie Nicholas, a couple from Jim Bett. And we've seen some good play also in flashes only from Mark Walters for Rangers. champions from the Rangers supporters certainly a draw would be satisfactory over the piece as far as the championship outcome is concerned for Rangers but they certainly started the match as though they really were intent on securing victory it's all become a little bit bogged down though in the last 10 to 15 minutes And an offside decision against Ali McCoy in the middle of the field. So a free kick to Aberdeen. And the match really has been played in staccato fashion in the opening 25 minutes. So many stoppages for free kicks. There's Connor. Back from Mason. And he's a chance for Walters on the break. He's got the legs of Irvin. Across comes McLeish. He didn't quite have the accuracy, but perhaps the best chance of the match so far to Rangers. Wonderful skill here by Mark Walters. Saw the keeper was off his line, stubbed his two under a lovely, beautiful little chip. And very unfortunate to see it go wide. But you've got to ask, where were the Aberdeen defenders there, Jock? They were all at sea, weren't they? So that was Rangers' best chance of the match so far. And Mark Walters demonstrating one of the most difficult skills in the game. Uh, chip and full flight. Here's Irvin. Now Mason. Being hounded all the way there by Spackman. And stopped in the end by Brown. And a good, solid tackle. Here's Stuart McKimmy now with the throw for Aberdeen. Nicholas coming short. That's a good turn away from Spackman. Playing it in there, looking for Hillhouse. And once again, Stuart Munro doing a good job at the back for Rangers. Taking up good position. Cost £15,000 when he signed for Rangers from Alloa in 1984. Oh, Marvellous investment in the Ibrox club. Goff doing well against Bet. Here's McKimmy. Now Nicholas. Trying to play that through for Grant. And the ball scrambled away in rather unconvincing fashion by Rangers. Two Walters, who's away from Simpson, trying now to take on Brian Irvin. That's a good sliding challenge by the big defender. Well, Walters certainly cutting some problems now for Aberdeen. At least trying to find Mason with that return pass, but Butcher is there for Rangers. There's McLeish. Tough exchange there, McLeish and McCoy together, it breaks for Grant. This is Mason. Good anticipation shown there by Brown. McKimmy and Tom trying to find Grant, had broken on the right. The ball has gone out though for a Rangers throw. Rangers, of course, requiring some time to settle again they made an impressive start to the match then lost Gary Stevens and Ian Ferguson through injury so with both substitutes committed they've had to settle down once more in a new formation and here's Trevor Stephen Spackman Stephen again running into McKimmy Johnston bundled from the rear by Connor that's a free kick to Rangers And no one in any hurry to get the ball back. Well, the ball really has been, to a large extent, superfluous so far in the opening half hour or so. Terry Butcher going forward. 
He's at one corner of the box. Goff is at the other. And Spikeman prepares to take this free kick. It's won by Irvin. That's Hillhouse. Setting it up well for Bet. Aberdeen now getting players forward. Front three certainly making runs ahead. McLeish picking out McKimmy. Promising this for Aberdeen. Grant has made a run. Return there by Mason. Here's McKimmy. Well, that was a good move from Aberdeen. There is the scoreline on the half hour mark. No scoring. Mark Walters coming closest to a goal with a fine chip shot a few minutes ago for Rangers. And Stuart McKimmy doing well on the run. That cross taken comfortably by Woods. This is Johnston and Walters. Recoys to Johnston. It came off Connor. Dodds now to Monroe. Here's Trevor Stephen. Monroe to Dodds. Stephen is offside. So was Stuart Monroe. Aberdeen retaining their organisation and composure. Not being tempted to go back. Well, now, looking at that again, it's very questionable. I think Robert Connor was a little bit slow in coming out there, Jock, and uh, that was marginal. I tell you, I mean, if you're a Rangers fan, you'd be thinking that was on side. Well, the two players going in opposite directions. I mean, it looked as though Stephen was well offside, but, well, that three play certainly cast some doubt on the decision. So the throw for Aberdeen taken by Bet. Crowd strangely hushed again as Mason sends it across. Hillhouse trying to get the better of Brown, getting help from McKimmy. Mason trying to nudge that on. Bet was calling for the ball on the far side. And it lets it bounce. In goes Johnston. Linesman is flagging and it's a foul against Johnston. Think of it a pulling and tugging there at Robert Connor. Connor's free kick looking for Hillhouse. He's beaten by Brown. Beautifully taken down by Walters. Kimmy showing him the line. Now showing him inside. Johnston looking for McCoy. Irvin is in the way. Here's Mason and Simpson. Played wide by Nicholas. Bet couldn't keep it in play. Aberdeen always anxious to get Jim Bet involved in their creative moves from midfield. Well, he very rarely gives the ball away, Jim Bet. You know, you know that when he's got it, Aberdeen will continue their attack because Jim you know, doesn't like to just kick the ball away, he wants to use it, make sure he finds a red jersey with it. And uh, I, I think he's done a very good one. Well, he was the culprit there, conceding that free kick for the challenge on Stephen. It's taken by Goff. McLeish getting the better of McCoy. Throw is given to Aberdeen. Back it goes from Bet. Yes, Hillhouse, see how well he gets up. Butcher lofting that very high, he'll have to go for it again. Grant, nudging it wide for McKimmy. Here's Nicholas and Mason. Grant has McKimmy free on the right, he's onside. And it came off Trevor Stephen, appeals for handball, waved aside again by the referee. Hopeful ones, I reckon, once again by the Aberdeen fans this time. Simpson returning it. That's an offside decision. Well, you could have anticipated that. Jim Bett throwing the ball to Simpson, and the Rangers defensive line then just moved straight out to prevent that return pass. Well, a game, Ian, which would certainly be the better of a goal. Oh, yes. I mean, we, we've had uh, a lot of scrappy play. One or two promising little moves, you know. 
Aberdeen are, have, have got some very talented players and when they get the ball and try to play it around and keep it on the ground then they're, they're looking quite dangerous Dodge playing it wide here's Morris Johnston Rangers pushing players into the box now completion shooting that ball didn't get across the face of his goal there's Hillhouse a careless one from Johnston allowing Hillhouse to break on the left Spackman getting back bundling Hillhouse down he couldn't match the pace of the Dutchman Aberdeen trying to get forward again there's Walters winning it back in style for Rangers Johnston's layoff Steven to Spackman Challenge came from Nicholas, but here's Trevor Stephen again. Spikeman trying to play it forward. McCoist. To Brown. I mean, this is better by Rangers. At least they've got the ball and they're trying to keep it. We've seen them string their seven or eight passes together here. And then up it goes in the air and it's shared. So the move breaks down with that challenge by Brown on Mason. McKimmy loaded down carefully by Goff for Butcher there's Irvin with the header Dodds underneath it Stephen to Monroe Johnston calling for the throw he's not disappointed by the far side linesman Gordon Black from Inverness here's Johnston to Monroe good left for it cross Grant heads away here's space for Simpson to exploit Nicholas No bet. Fiercely tackled by Monroe. No offence there by Monroe. The referee waste play on as Connor has the ball for Aberdeen. Now Grant. Here's Mason. Grant again. And David Odd stepped in to Topok that ball back to Chris Woods. Cost £100,000 when he signed from Aberdeen in September. doing well with Johnston trying to go in behind him turn back there by the Coist to Walters and here's John Brown going to be fouled there by Mason the referee allows play to continue if Walters can reach this there would be an advantage well the throw it is Kimmy with the throw for Aberdeen. The news coming from south of the border at Main Road, Manchester. Oldham Athletic have taken the lead in the FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United early on. That kick-off at 3.30. And the scorer was Bunt. Setting up a shock final because Crystal Palace, you may recall, beat Liverpool 4-3 after extra time in the first semi-final. Beaten by Butcher. There's Spackman. A little push there from McCoy. Stan Irvin. No hold up though. Still McCoy's in possession. Testing Bobby Mims. Well, I think the keeper expected that. He saw McCoy set himself here as he stepped away from Brian Irvin. Hit this towards the near post. But the keeper was across. Kimmy lofting it forward. Butcher the master in the air again for Rangers. This is Brown. Johnston is well offside. Charlie McLeish coping well so far with his international teammates. Harry McCoy and Boris Johnston. That's a good header on by Hillhouse. Here's Bet. 
trying to find Mason making that run to near post area. Good move that from Aberdeen. It was a beautiful header by Hill House in the first place. And Jim Bett looking just to bend one in near post there. Mason went short, went past it, and Charlie came in behind him, and the goalkeeper made a good save. Great example there of Jim Bett's two-footedness. So comfortable both on the right and on the left. So five minutes remaining in the first half. Still no scoring. And neither goalkeeper really being called upon at this stage to produce anything too spectacular. Here's Nicholas. That's one for Hillhouse to chase. He had to go for that. It was going to bounce away from him. That's a goal kick to Rangers. But he does look a good player, Hillhouse. You know, he's one of those players that looks very tidy on the ball and very intelligent player. A couple of the times there, he's used his head very intelligently, and I mean by that, that he's headed the ball very intelligently. He's aware of what's going on around him. And very anxious, too, to make a further impression to enhance his World Cup chances for Holland. He knows there's, there are pictures going from here to Holland. Monroe with a pass back, and Mason was closing in, but Goff made certain there was no error. Connors header. It's a little nudge there by Mason on Monroe. It's a free kick to Rangers, which will be taken by Goff. Johnston to Stephen, but that was a good shooting chance for Trevor Stephen. Well created by Rangers, Morris Johnston being the provider. But I think Trevor Stephen will be a bit upset he didn't get a better strike at goal from that opening. Well, Trevor today has at least got himself into the goal scoring positions, John. That one there, a little volley and well wide of the target. But he's got in there on about three occasions, hasn't he? And that is important for Rangers to have him get in there and other midfield players getting forward. There's Bett and Connor. Now Simpson. Getting away from Spackman and from Dodds. Bett to Connor. Connor running into Walters, but Bett picks it up again. There's Simpson. Good return pass. Here's Bett. Patient play by Aberdeen. A little bit casual, though, that pass from Bett, allowing Stephen to intercept. Trying to bend that. Up the line there for Walters, but it's a throw to Rangers. So there's Stuart Monroe. Played forward by Johnston. McCoy goes in. Mims has to punch clear. Well, Mims made up his mind. He was very decisive there. Came out to make certain there was no mistake with any attempt to catch the ball. Here's Walters and Stephen. Pulling it back from McCoy. Superb play at the byline there from Trevor Stephen. He really does look the player most likely to open up the Aberdeen defence. Marvellous cross. Beautiful cross. And really, you know, Ali will be looking to say, well, I might hit the target there. Look how he just hooked that round. There was McCoy. And really, he'll be disappointed with that one, Jock. Looked as though McCoy was surprised that Stephen had been able to get that in. Well, yes, he would be surprised, but at the same time, he did get a, a good head on it, didn't he? Brown's header. Here's Johnston taking that brilliantly on the run, trying to get away from Irvin. That's a foul against Johnston. Frustration creeping in there. He was beaten fair and square by Brian Irvin and showed his frustration with a very rough challenge from the rear on Irvin, who is clearly in some pain and will require treatment from the Aberdeen physio. I think it was a case here of the, the big strong fella being uh, just a little bit uh, too weighty for the little man. Actually, he's had a very good game, hasn't he? He's had a very good game. He's obviously injured his neck in some way. This appeared to relate to the landing more than anything else, I think. Well, it almost well, a whiplash effect there as he fell. That's right, it's the old car crash. 
Well, a bit of concern here now for the Aberdeen management as David Wiley, the physio, gives treatment to Brian Irvin, who, as Ian St. John says, has been playing extremely well for Aberdeen. Alex Smith looking on in pensive fashion. Certainly won't want to change anything at the moment at the back for Aberdeen. Irvin doing a superb job standing in for Willie Miller this season since Willie Miller's operation in November. Bet back to Connor. Goff's header. Simpson first time forward, but Monroe will get there first. And his better foot to left for the pass back. Well, not quite enough of the creative stuff in the first half, Ian. No, it's been a stop-start game, a bit scrappy. Uh, too many fouls uh, for my liking. The game's never really settled into a pattern. But there's been little uh, inklings that if there's a certain players on the field with a lot of ability on both sides that if the game could settle down, you know, I think we could see some more efforts and goal job but at the moment you know it's only the occasional flash we get from say McCoy Johnson Walters down at this end and up the other end Hillhouse and uh, Charlie Nicholas to the high ball misjudged there by Brown and Hillhouse there will be a bit of stoppage time in this first half we're into that already we had 60 seconds time added on and of course there were these stoppages for Gary Stevens for Ian Ferguson then there for Brian Irvin so the referee may play a couple of minutes more just joined us, still no scoring here at Pataudry Rangers have lost Gary Stevens and Ian Ferguson through injury and they've used their substitutes John Brown and David Odds here's John Brown now for Rangers Rangers started the match very well indeed when they had their original starting lineup. then Aberdeen came more into it as Rangers tried to reorganise good tackle there by Walters the match at this stage undoubtedly is very evenly poised indeed. And the referee blows for half time. There's the score line. No goals in the first half. A lot of disappointing play in terms of fouls in that first half, but also evidence of some outstanding players on view. Watch us in the second half, and we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> 